Hey, today we are talking about Family Search. It is a free genealogy resource to help you build your family tree, to learn where the records are. We're going to talk about four areas within this really robust uh, Family Search website. And so all you need is a free account and it's easy to get started. So we're going to talk about the family tree. We're going to talk about the ancestors profiles. We're going to talk about how to find the records and how to research the records. So those four areas are what we're focused on today. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode on Genealogy TV. My name is Connie Knox and I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. All right. Today, we are going to talk about all of those four things, the family tree, the ancestors, the, how to find the records, and how to research the records. We're going to get into all of that, but first, I want to let you know there is a handout for this episode, and the handout is like in stupidly long. I wrote too much. You know, I get crazy writing, and there we go. So if you want the handout, links uh, for how to find the handout are in the description box below the video. All right, let's get going. When you first get to the family tree, you may be presented with a screen that looks something like this. First thing we're going to talk about is the family tree part of this website. And if you're brand new here, this may be all new to you. And if you've been here before, bear with me. I promise I will get to some of the research tricks a little bit later on. But right now we're going to talk about the different tree charts. I personally happen to love the family tree. You can change it to landscape. You can change it to a portrait view or back to the fan chart. You can also change it to a descendancy view and the first ancestor. And the first ancestor is the first ancestor in your tree. I believe it is the oldest ancestor in your tree. So if I click on that uh, for this particular line, it is Abram Davis in my tree. Now, remember this is family search. I keep my primary tree on ancestry. You do you, this is me. I like it. ancestry because it is my tree and on family search, as a reminder, it is a collaborative tree. So everybody is working on the same tree. That can be good and that can be bad. It just depends on you. So with the family tree, you can it also expand with these little filter icons up here. You can expand to six, seven generations. So if I wanted to expand this further, I could. I'll show you what that looks like. So there's seven generations. You can see that there are some areas that need work. Personally, I haven't verified all of these on my tree on Ancestry. That's just me. I've got a lot of it. A lot of it is done. I'm working on this guy up here right now. So one of the things that I want to remind you is that Family Search is always a great place to come back and use the resources and the hints and what other people have been doing on those same ancestors. Again, remember that this, I wrote this into the handout. Think of this tree as you are one grain of sand in the world giant tree. And the world's giant tree here, this is the largest family tree in the world, is the beach. And what you, when you are looking at yourself on this tree, and here I am down here, right? When I'm looking at myself, I'm that one little grain of sand on the beach. Okay? So this tree is enormous. You can keep going and going and going. In different directions. It just, if you are connected to the, the, the world tree, then you're on the beach. Now keep in mind that if this is your first time at Family Search, it will prompt you to go through a uh, kind of a questionnaire kind of thing to help you get connected to the world tree. And it's not that difficult to do so. If you know your parents and your grandparents, it probably is pretty easy. There are several things you can do here with this family tree. And what's fun about it is you can not only change the seven generations and Ancestry just came out with their own fan chart, by the way. One of the things that you can do here before we get too far into the filters, if you were to take this little tiny fan and click on it, it's going to bring this person to the center. So watch, we click and boom, Benjamin Booth is now in the center. Now, some of the other cool things about the fan chart and some of the other features, first of all, I like to look at it in the inverted colors because it's easy on the eyes. And so I keep, I do a lot of things in dark mode. So I just like it that way. 
You can also change to birthplace, and this kind of gives you a legend over here as to where some of these branches are coming from. So as you can see, this pink color says British Colonial America, and we've got some England up here. So clearly from England into Colonial America and on down. We've got Scotland on this branch. We've got Germany, Ireland. Let's see, where's Ireland? We got Ireland over here. We've got a little bit of France over here. So we've got some, some pretty cool things about this tree alone, which I think is, is just fabulous. Let's take a look at sources. So the more sources that are available for each branch, the darker the color. So as you can see, there's 10 plus sources on some of these. And it's like, oh, yay. I need to go look at some of those sources because I may not have them on my primary tree, which is for me on Ancestry. For some of you, it might be on a software like Roots Magic or uh, Family Tree Maker or one of those. So this is kind of cool. You can also look at stories. There are no stories, or very few anyway, that are listed in there. Those are things like uh, things that people have uploaded, little stories and things. Photographs, we've got photographs, of course. We're looking way back into the uh, 1800s here. And so if you want to reorient yourself back to yourself, I'm going to hit the home button. And that brings me back to me in the center. And now you can change the filters to photographs. There's still not a lot of photographs up here. And then the research helps is really kind of alerting you to possible errors in the tree. And so uh, there's actually no problem showing in this tree. And then record hints. Uh, that may also be uh, valuable to you. So that is the tree in a nutshell. Was that a pun? A nutshell? Just kidding. Okay, I'm back on the home screen. We're going to talk about search here now. But one of the things that I want to caution you about, no matter where you are in your family history journey, try not to get distracted. All of these little widgets that they have on the home screen are you know, rabbit holes just waiting for you to go down, right? It's like, ooh, I want to go look at that. Ooh, I want to go look at that. And so what I would suggest you do is every time you come back to your research, come to any research with purpose, right? I want to focus on Benjamin Garrett, who lived from 1776 and died in 1865. That's my mission. So now I am going to go to search and I'm going to click on records. Now there's a lot of things we can talk about here and we will talk about some of these here in a moment, but I'm going to go to records. So when you click on records, this is where it takes you and you can do a couple of things here, but most people immediately start filling out, you know, Benjamin Garrett and it says birth or death year. So I'm going to say 1865 because that's when he died. And he was in West Virginia. Now, I could put in his county as well, but I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, this is not the way I do this. I'm just saying. What I do is I click on more options because then I can add some additional information. He had a spouse. I could put her name in here. Her name was Sarah Bloss. So now I can narrow the focus and it will help the search engine find my guy a little bit faster. Now, remember, we're looking for records for Benjamin Garrett, but more than likely what's going to happen is it's going to first deliver me records that are tied to the family tree. So here we have Benjamin Garrett, West Virginia, Sarah Bloss, uh, Illinois deaths. This person is connected to the family tree. That's what that icon means. There is more data information here. Down here on this one, this looks more likely to be him because I know he was born in 1776 and died in 1865. This says he's part of the tree. This record has an image and there you can view the record details. Just clicking on that opens up the record details. I'm going to go back because I want to show you a couple more things about this. So now that we've gone back, it's changed to purple over here. So one of the things that you want to notice is it says principal here, meaning that this record is about Benjamin Garrett records, but sometimes it might say daughter or son here. It says father, right? So th that means that this record is about that Benjamin Garrett is the father of whoever's in this record. Probably this record is about Morris Garrett. Okay. So here it says find a grave. 
Well, all right. So find a grave, you know, is user input. It is what it is. It may or may not be accurate. So we need to always verify with actual records. Here we have a, a Benjamin Garrett in the 1860 census. So we could sit there and explore some of these. So let's just look at the find a grave. If we go to the image, it took us all the way to find a grave and straight to the Benjamin Garrett Jr.'s profile on find a grave. One of the things that we want to take a look at here is first of all, there's a tombstone, which is very valuable. And I have studied this tombstone. It is challenging to read. You can see it and you can actually click down here to see the original. And it is a good close-up shot, but it's still very, very hard to read. It does say 1776 here. It says he died January, looks like 21st, 1860. And the five is missing. Now you can tell a little bit more about this. And I am grateful to whoever photographed this. Clearly they had to hold up the uh, tombstone in order to take the picture. You can see their hands in the picture holding it up. So back on that same search screen that we were at, there's a few tricks that you can do here. Yes, you can work through these records, but over here on the right hand side, you can actually do some extra work. Here it says image or group number. We could actually plug in a family history library group number. Let me show you how to do this from the start in case you happen to be on a different location like Ancestry, for example. Here I'm on Ancestry and my ancestor, Benjamin Garrett, is right here, but he's so hard to see that I want to go see if Family Search has a better quality copy. So over here it says Family History Library film number and you can see I've got that highlighted. I've already copied it, but you just highlight it and Control C to copy and then I can go over to the family search. I'm going to go to search. I'm going to start all over again like I was just starting a search, but we click on more options. And here it says image or group number. I'm going to plug in that group number and I'm going to hit search. And I'm going to get closer, but I'm not there. So, so one of the tricks you can do is just drill into one of these records and search around to find your ancestor. I've already found him here and you can see it says Benjamin Garrett, little clearer. But one of the reasons why I was having such trouble finding this guy is because the index was completely wrong. It says Benjamin Gardner here. And on the family search version of it, the transcription said Benjamin Garst. It's not even close. So long story short is look in both places because sometimes it's easier to read. Now I need to fix these transcription errors and for those who are in the academy I'm going to be showing you how to do this specific task uh, in an upcoming lesson. So let's fix that transcription error. So we want to make sure that we have the right guy. So I can see that John Gilkinson, so we got John Gilkinson above and Benjamin Garrett below. So let's fix this Benjamin Garrett. We click on the pencil icon and then we can click in and we can change this to Garrett and hit save changes. And now hopefully the transcription is correct. And there it is. Okay. I want to show this to you because this is another little research trick that you can do. And there's lessons here. So I over on Ancestry, here's Benjamin Garrett on Ancestry, and this is the work that I have done so far. And if you'll notice, I have the 1860, 1850, 1814, 1830, 1820, but I don't have the 1810 census. He should be about 34 years old, if I do my math right, in 1810. So let's see on Family Search if we can find him in the 1810 census. Now, just some context, you always want to know when borders changed, West Virginia, which is where he died in Cable County, was not a state until 1863. And it was born from Virginia. So theoretically, we should be looking in Virginia. So we're going to click on more options. We're going to type Benjamin Garrett. And what I want to do is I want to look for residents in Virginia. I'm not going to dial it down to the county level because we're starting to get back there in time and and he, he's not a Smith or a Jones or a Taylor. He should be reasonably easy to find. So I'm going to type 1810 
And I'm going to say 1810 again for the range. So hopefully we get just to that. And I'm going to hit search. Now, one of the things you can do up here is you can click on this collections tab, which I find helpful. And then we can uh, drill into just the census. So we say all census. Oh, it says 1810 census. And let's apply that filter. And now we can get down to a just a few people in the 1810 census. And I, you can see I have, was looking at this Benjamin Garrett here in the Shenandoah area of Virginia. Now, the Shenandoah area of Virginia is quite a distance from Cable County, West Virginia, where I have a lot of data on him. So I need to do some more research on this here. I don't believe... I could be wrong, but I don't believe that any of these three are him. And so if we drill into this record here, let's view the record. There's some things that you want to pay attention to. First of all, I could attach it to the family tree here. We can edit, we can save. There's quite a few things, but we always, always, always want to drill into the original record and see it. Now, this one is really hard to see even on family search, but you can make out Benjamin Garrett. Now, how do we know that this is him or not? One of the things that you can do is look at the neighbors and this is another lesson for another day, but I would need to like go forward and back several pages and see if any of the other family members that he is associated with are in this neck of the woods, right? To see if maybe, the, you know, because people traveled in groups. So it could be that he was in the progress to getting to Cable County, West Virginia, and he went by way of the Shenandoah area in Virginia. So more work for me to do here, but I just wanted to show this to you that this is possible to find it in a different way. Do I want to save this to my guy as the 1810 census? You know, like, oh boy, I found another record? No, absolutely not, because I have no proof that this is my guy. As a matter of fact, if I had done my homework properly before researching the 1810 census, I would have learned that not all of the 1810 census is available. So let's go take a look. If we go to the search tab and then drop down to the family search wiki, this is another area that is incredibly valuable for research. So I'm going to click on North America. We're just going to drill into location. If you're not familiar with doing this, I'm going to drill into Virginia. I'm going to click over here on the right hand side to census records and I get this nice little grid that tells me that only part of the 1810 census is available. It's available both on Family Search and Ancestry and if I right click and open in a new tab I can get to that um, 1810 census specifically and research from here and I would get the same results that I showed you earlier for Benjamin Garrett so I'm not going to do that again. But what I wanted to show you is as I'm working backwards, my next thought was, okay, let's go see if we can find him in 1800 or 1790 because he was born in 1776. But wait, those two record sets are not available. So make sure that you are even looking, are the records actually available? Don't just jump to the conclusion that the one and only Benjamin Garrett in the 1810 census, it must be him because there are no others. It could be that those areas, the, the records don't exist, or it may not exist. So I need to do more research, you know, like I said, going forward and backwards multiple pages to determine if that is my guy or not. There's a lot of other things that we can do to try and search for Benjamin Garrett. I'm not going to go into it a whole lot right here, but tax records is one that comes to mind. Okay, let's talk about the ancestor profile. Now I'm going to drill into it from the tree because I usually start from the tree no matter where I am. I'm going to drill into Benjamin. I'm going to click into person. They've got a lot of little widgets here. And so one of the things that I want to just kind of give you a quick tour if you're not familiar with the profile. So you can view your relationship by clicking on that. And it gives me a long line of how I am related to Benjamin Garrett, which is kind of cool. You can view the tree, which we just came from. One of the things you want to do is follow. So if you click on follow, I'm going to click on follow because anytime somebody changes something on this profile, remember this is a collaborative tree. So anybody can be changing this profile by following it. I can then 
click on the following tab up at the top and see the changes that people have made to some of the ancestors that I am following. All right, so the first widget is the vitals. Information here saying there's a possible child missing. It, these are just kind of like a little alerts that, you know, help you think things through. It could be that he um, was between wives because there might have been a second wife in here. That might explain that. Um, you got a lot of other information and these little pencil icons, you can edit any of this information that you want, but please make sure that you have quality sources or knowledge, personal knowledge, that you know is absolutely correct. And so yes, people can change it um, before you send me a lot of hate mail in the comments about people changing your ancestors. It's not my fault. So uh, I get it. You can always have a conversation with them. You can always reach out to them through uh, the messaging center on Family Search. One of the things that I find the most helpful here on Family Search in the profile are the sources. And so make sure that you are reviewing all of the sources. I'm going to collapse this, but these little arrows open up and collapse the different sources so you can see all of the different information that is available. And I'm seeing a, a piece of information that I don't think I have on my ancestry tree. So I'm going to have to dig into that and see what's up with that. We have collaboration. Now, in this case, there are no other people in the collaboration section for this particular ancestor, but you can actually uh, connect with other people through the collaboration. There are some memories here. These are things that people have uploaded. In this case, the will of Benjamin Garrett, pages one and two. Yay, I do have this information. Yes, I've already transcribed it and already put it into my research notes, but uh, make sure that you're doing that because it's an education in itself, just transcribing information. And then there is the timeline. One of the things that I'm kind of excited to see here on Family Search is that his wife has a photograph and we love photographs, right? I don't see it anywhere else. So I'm gonna go snag that photograph a little bit later, but there is a good little timeline here. So there's some really good information here about your ancestors on the ancestor profile. And here is a, an excellent tip is to copy this number and put it into your research notes and put it into your ants. If you're on ancestry and use that as your primary or family tree maker or roots magic or whatever, grab that number because that is the unique identifier for that ancestor on family search. So make sure you have a, a copy of that. You might even want to grab the URL. And if you'll notice at the end of the URL, that same number is there as well. So grab that URL and put it into your research notes. Also know that you can, as you scroll down to the bottom and you're in the family members uh, widget, you can add people by going add a child, add a parent, just follow the wizard that it takes you through and it will help you there. So you've got, you can add a child here, you can add a child there. You can also add a spouse in here by uh, clicking on add a spouse. Uh, so that's just some of the little tricks for the ancestor profile. Considering that family search is free, it should always be part of your research process. <laughs>